On the face of it, Miami is just more of a nightclub town, and I didn't really see at that time um, a lot of DJs that were playing eclectic music. Um, and at the same time, I revived my group, Spam All Stars, and uh, our, at that era from you know 98 to 2002 I was heavily into sampling vinyl so I was making music using my record collection for beats and ideas and so it was kind of like uh, you know and all this all this vinyl buying and collecting and obsessing uh, was sort of feeding this creative uh, uh, time as well. My first choice was the uh, Deep City Records uh, anthology on the Numero Group label out of Chicago. And uh, so basically that's a collection of singles uh, that were was recorded on Deep City Records, uh, which was our, our local Miami label. And uh, I, I chose that because I think it uh, it's important to the story of uh, Miami music uh, and record making from the 60s. I also chose uh, uh, a record by a guy called Little Beaver, who is a guitarist, songwriter, singer. Little Beaver record's important because you really kind of get a feel for um, that era of soul music in Miami. His album uh, from 1974 is called Party Down. He started out down here in the mm, mid to late 60s as well, uh, and then found uh, success uh, on the TK record uh, group, uh, which was Henry Stone's label. That record for me was um, the first record uh, that kind of alerted me to the fact that there was a, a Miami soul music scene. And living in Miami for almost, you know, eight years before I kind of realized that under the uh, crust that was left over by disco and Miami bass, there was this whole other uh, mantle of uh, soul uh, music that was created here that had basically been erased. To round it out a little bit, I chose a record by Tunde Williams who was the uh, trumpet player in uh, Fela Kuti's band uh, during the 1970s and uh, I've been collecting that music since the early 90s as well. I started my record collecting at about the age of four and um, my father used to have a record by Johnny Cash that was, uh, it's the Johnny Cash Live at Folsom Prison. And um, I was fascinated by that record. The sound of it and the emotion uh, that was conveyed on that record is, 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 is amazing. But the cover, I would stare at. And, uh, you know, like, you see, uh, there, it's a big shot of his head, and then you see him sweating. And I just remember staring at the sweat on his neck. How many hours I spent as a child just, just looking at it, staring at it, and then later I got the San Quentin record, which is a sort of black and blue cover, and the same thing. I would just stare at them and stare at them for hours, and uh, you know, um, I don't know, I, I suppose that's where my record fetish really, uh, you know, began. Really, as far as cover art goes, I, I feel like the more famous labels um, across the board of, of genres, each label created its own feel and look, and uh, the same goes for the Miami labels. Uh, TK and those early soul records, they have a look, you know, uh, there's a certain feel to them. Um, a lot of the typesetting was done by a guy called Drago Fernandez, uh, who was out in Hialeah, and um, so they have, you know, the, 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 the logos that they would use, the lettering that they would choose, uh, all of that sort of gave this feel, which collectors love, you know, when you're a collector, that's kind of what makes you collect, it's like, oh, okay, I have this one, now I have to go get this one, because they go together, you know, it's the, it's that sense of, um, you know, putting like objects together, I suppose that uh, that's what uh, appeals to a collector's mind, or at least it does to mine.